Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey, and here's a quick news video. Unity Dots has just received a massive update. As you might know, the last public Dots release was over a year ago, all the way back in 2020. Since then, Unity have continued working on Dots, but they did it in private. They were preparing a massive update, which starts right now and is on the path to reaching 1.0 next year. There's two massive blog posts with tons of info on this update and the future, also a public roadmap. There's links in the description if you want to read it yourself. Here's my quick summary. But first, if you started using Unity in the recent months or in the last one to two years, then you might not even know what is Unity Dots or what is ECS. I made a video on that topic quite a long time ago. It's an overview explanation of the technology stack, so the video is still accurate. Also, one very important thing, just like I mentioned in that video, Dots is composed of the Entity Component System, the Job System, and the Burst Compiler. The only part of that that is still in preview and experimental is the part that got this massive update, which is the Entity Component System. The job system and Burst Compiler have already been production ready for quite some time. That's actually one of the first things they mentioned in the blog post, how ECS is still in experimental stage, so it's not recommended for final production, but the job system and the Burst Compiler, those are indeed already stable and you can use them in production. They mentioned the roadmap to getting to version 1.0, first starting off with this release, 0.5, meant for compatibility with Unity 2020 LTS. Then over the next one to three months, we should see a quick update to 0.51. This one will make it compatible with 2021 LTS, which should be coming out really soon. And finally, the big one, version 1.0 compatible with the 2020 tech stream. Meaning that hopefully version 1.0 will be production ready in time for the 2020 LTS version, which should come out sometime next year. The main goal with ECS is really to enable more types of games to be created with Unity. And they also mentioned one extremely important thing that has been a big point of confusion to so many people. ECS does not replace game objects, so game objects are not being deprecated at all. If your game ideas are already possible to build with game objects, then nothing changes on that front. You can continue to use game objects to build your games for many, many years to come. This is just extra technology which may or may not be suitable to whatever game you're trying to make. They mention a handful of scenarios where a data-oriented ECS architecture might be better suited than objects. By going with a data-oriented design, it leads to better written code since you have to split everything up into tons of discrete components. So one side effect of that is helping you be more easily adaptable to where your game design is headed. Since again, it works with game objects, you can just integrate ECS on some parts of your game that require extreme performance. So perhaps your game's bottleneck is on the pathfinding, so you could keep everything else exactly the same using game objects and just rewrite the pathfinding to use ECS. ECS really enables extreme performance, so that also enables you to build much more complex, much more demanding games on every device imaginable. So think something like an RTS with tons of units, or perhaps an action game with tons of effects, or maybe an adventure game with tons of NPCs, all of those examples running on a low-end mobile device. ECS also enables massive data streaming, so it lets you create some absolutely massive worlds and easily stream chunks in and out. So think something on the scale of Elden Ring, but being able to run on a mobile device. You can simulate things on massive scales, so it enables things like a massive universe simulation, or perhaps something on a much smaller scale, but with huge detail and accuracy. Multiplayer is also a big focus. More performance means more complex multiplayer games with more players and all kinds of synced objects. So those are just a handful of scenarios where ECS can enable you to build different experiences than just with game objects. Also, in case you don't know, GDC is starting next week, and there will be two talks on games already using Dots. The super popular VR MMO Zenith is apparently using it, as well as a really cool racing mobile game. This blog post ends with asking for feedback. There's many ways to get in touch with the Dots team. And again, it ends by mentioning that the goal is to continue building ECS whilst keeping compatibility with game objects. So again, game objects are not going anywhere. Then the other blog post is on more of the technical details. Starting off with how the Entity Debugger window, which had tons of information, is now nicely split into several windows. The profiler is also improved to help you set up your architecture in a better way and cause less structural changes. Systems have apparently been simplified. There used to be quite a lot of boilerplate code you need to write to make a system, so this seems like a great change. Netcode also got lots of upgrades. Physics predictions, subscene streaming, simpler commands and more. The renderer also got an upgrade and now has compatibility with tons of shaders and includes multiple features from AGRP and URP. And Physics and Havoc also got an update. Finally, there's the roadmap page. Quite a lot of detail on all of the changes in 0.5 and how to upgrade your project. Mentions how version 0.51 is coming soon. 
And finally, lots of info on all of the things that are in progress for version 1.0, as well as other things that are in planning and some others just under consideration. So this is all really exciting, we're finally getting to see what Unity has been working on for these past few years, and hopefully soon enough we shall see all of the benefits from this new tech. Now for me, I'm already insanely busy with so many projects, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to do any videos on this update, but that is really exciting and I'm definitely looking forward to see how it develops, and I'm very curious to see all of the completely unique games that this technology will enable in the coming years. Let me know in the comments if you're planning on trying it out right away, or if you're going to wait until next year for version 1.0. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.